Welcome to Pi Pod Chronicles, a series that brings our tech blog to life in a whole new way. Covering an array of topics surrounding Python and tech, from programming tips, best practices, and so much more. Let's get immersed in Python with the Nerd Nook on the go. If you've been keeping up with the blog, then you'll know me as Rusty Raccoon. But if you're new here, I'm Josh, your host. Here we are in episode one, giving this a title of Learning the Fundamentals. I'm stoked to have you all here. What will this episode be about? Well, dipping your toe into Python and, of course, learning the fundamentals. In this episode, we are going to look at a guide to guide you through the key aspects of creating the foundations with Python. Now, what is Python? Well, Python is a high-level programming language that is easy to learn and use. Why is it easy to learn? Well, it's kind of like English, and more specifically, it's kind of like written English. It can be used for web development, data analysis, machine learning, and more. Plus, it has an awesome logo with a cool snake. So what's not to like? Before we get into the world of Python, let's take a moment to understand what programming is. And simply put, programming is the process of writing instructions that a computer can understand and execute. So think of it as giving your computer a to-do list. Let's take a look at some of the Python basics, so the syntax. And the syntax is like the grammar we use in Python. You're going to hear the word and term variables, and basically a variable is a word that holds a value, and that value can be any type of data in Python, so type of data. It could be a string, which is just text. It could be an integer, a decimal number, a Boolean value, or a data structure, which could be a dictionary, a list, set, a tuple, and there are also a few more. We also have functions in Python, and a function is like a mini program that you write yourself, and in short terms, a function is reusable code. So I create this one time somewhere in my program, then any time I want to use it, I just need to call its name, which we're actually going to be looking at functions here in a later episode. Now that you've heard some of the fundamental terms, we need to talk about navigating the realm of Python. And if you're a newbie here, don't worry, because I've got you covered. Now, we need to choose an IDE. What is an IDE? It's an integrated development environment. And it's basically a software application that gives you an environment for which you can write your code and program. So some popular IDEs could be PyCharm, VS Code, Atom, and Sublime. Of course there's more, but these are just four of the popular ones. If you've watched any of my other videos or my courses and you've been following along, then you know that I'm a big fan of VS Code. Once you have an IDE, then, well, it's time to look at some Python libraries. And a library, I want you to think of this as like a collection of code. And it's kind of like iCloud, right? We keep all of our pictures and our data up in the cloud then when we want them, we retrieve them from the cloud and bring them to our phone. Well, it's like that here with Python. A Python library is extra code that we can import into our project that has functions we can use. So some popular libraries could be NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, PyQt. There's endless Python libraries, and you can learn about these as you need them for your projects. Going forward, right, you heard me say earlier Python syntax. Now, syntax refers to the rules that govern how we write code in Python. So, for example, in Python, we use indentation, and that's just the white space at the beginning of the line to indicate blocks of code. And I've already gone through some Python data types, right? Strings, integers, booleans, lists, a lot more. How can you use Python in real life? What are the applications of Python? Well, let's start with just a few. We have web development. Now, most of the time when you think of web development, you probably think of JavaScript or React. That's true, 
most applications or a lot of them might lean towards that route. But with Python, we can also do web development and Python is still a popular choice because we can use Python frameworks like Django or Flask and we can build powerful dynamic web applications with these frameworks. Another popular use case for Python is data analysis. Python is widely used in this, just like the R programming language. It's good for its extensive libraries like NumPy and Pandas, which we use for data analysis. And with these tools, we can easily manipulate and analyze large data sets to make presentations of our data. We can use Python for machine learning. Python is becoming increasingly popular in this field of machine learning. And we're talking about libraries here like TensorFlow or PyTorch and even Scikit-Learn. You can build sophisticated machine learning models and solve complex problems using Python. Another popular use case that you might be here for is automation. Python is a great tool for automating repetitive tasks. And this could be that you need to scrape data from the web or automate a workflow or perform system administration tasks. Don't worry, because Python's got you covered. Why is Python so popular and what are some of the advantages? Well, Python is like the programming language that's more popular than avocado on toast at a hipster brunch. That's right, that was the analogy that I came up with. First of all, Python's super versatile. You remember as a kid, you might have gotten like a Swiss army knife. You always wanted one because that knife had everything in it. Well, Python is like that too, as you heard earlier in the applications for it. But that's not all, right? The syntax is clean and straightforward because it's all in English and it's like writing a sentence in English. We translate it nearly the same way. Another reason why Python is so popular is because it's huge community, right? There are countless online forums or tutorials or even courses that you may find available. Now, of course, each course is different and you need to find the one that helps you learn best. But there's no need to be intimidated by all that tech jargon. Let's talk about a few of the benefits of learning Python. You may be thinking, cool, Python sounds great, but why should I bother, right? I'm trying to learn JavaScript or I'm trying to learn C++. Well, if you're a beginner, you should learn Python. It's easy to grasp and pick up the logic. And once you learn that logic, you can implement that in all the other languages. Plus, Python has a lot of job opportunities that are in demand right now. So if you check out any of the big tech giants or any company, right, I'm sure that there's a key element in their corporation that uses Python. Another reason, problem solving. Learning Python teaches you how to logically solve problems. These skills can be applied to all areas of your life, not just Python and learning other programming languages, but who knows? You may find yourself using a newfound problem-solving skill to win an argument at a later stage. And of course, creativity. Python allows you to create anything you can imagine. It could be a web app, a game, data visualization. Python gives you that power to bring your ideas to life in a simpler term. Now there is a big learning curve, but that's okay because if you don't wanna go out and just buy a course right now, there are so many free online resources. You can check out places like Free Code Camp, and that's a great online starting resource that's free. A few tips before diving in and getting started. Are you ready to start writing code? Well, great, just remember this. Start small. Don't write complex problems or try to learn complex problems right off the bat. Start with something simple and build as you go. Play out different scenarios and get creative. So take a big problem and break it down to small tasks. Test your code often. So run your code as much as you can and find the errors. They're your friends. In the terminal of VS Code, your errors are gonna help guide you and fix them easily. It tells you exactly where the errors are. And you can use Google because Google is your friend. Find the error, and if you need to go to Google, don't be afraid to, because there's a wealth of resources available online to help you. And once again, in the beginning, have fun. Programming is challenging, but it's like solving a puzzle or Sudoku, 
right? People do that because they like a challenge. Well, Python's the same way, but have fun doing it. Whether you're a beginner or experienced programmer, there's always something new to learn in the world of Python. So why not dive in and see what Python can do for you? Well, that's all for now. Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of PyPod Chronicles. Be sure to check out the blog if you're looking for more, and the link is in the description. Well, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next episode.